Contact James live on the air several different ways. You can call by phone, toll free in the United States and Canada at 888-863-2722. If you have internet access, point your browser to www.feet2fire.com. That's www.feet, the digit 2, fire.com. Uh, we are going to go live to John Turmel. Let me get his... Uh, web, web information up. Well, actually, there's a whole lot about him. One of the things he's noted for is having the Guinness Book of World Records for running for office the most amount of time. And uh, uh, I can see that because of what he's standing for and all the aspects of uh, calling himself the anti-poverty engineer and the uh, getting the uh, rid of the interest on the debt, etc. Well, you can see why the, the powers that be wouldn't want him on there. I have a quite lengthy biography on the web page. The, his uh, website is johnturmel.com. There's also Facebook, John dot T U R M E L is his name. He is uh, uh, very active in this uh, new movement that's out, the Occupy X, or whatever. Some of the things that um, he puts on here, he believes in uh, Lewis Evans. Quebec social credit theory of monetary reform. I got links to all of that. The local employment trade systems called LETS, interest-free barter arrangements, uh, legalization of marijuana, uh, the uh, protests about the major banking systems and talking about the starvation of people in the third world, etc. So he sounds like an all-around good guy with his eyes open, which means he'll never be elected. Well, hey, times are changing. And so maybe that's different. Well, I want to welcome uh, from Canada, John Tremellon, and thanks for being here. My pleasure. Uh, our time's changing. Are you finding that uh, other than the people who really appreciate you being the people out here in the in the in the trenches? I mean, are, uh, do you think this is actually working its way up through the system higher and higher? Well, yes. There there has been a general awakening of people uh, protesting what the banks have done and how they're malfunctioning. Um, I was at three of the um, Occupy Toronto marches over the last two weekends, and uh, on my sign, my placard, I had some press clippings from when I was arrested picketing the IMF World Bank Conference in 1982, when I was all alone. So to have these thousands of people now out there angry at the banks, aware of the flaws in the banks, if not yet how to fix it, is a big change over three decades. And it seems that this this change seems to be happening like lightning in, in literally the last couple of years. Yeah, it's true. But one thing really saddens me is that almost none of the reformers are aware of the kind of inflation we're suffering from. Okay, economics teaches that if you got a hundred dollars chasing ten watches, economics teaches that inflation is an increase in the money chasing the watches. Now, it doesn't teach the other possibility. Well, what's that? Well, the same money chasing less watches after foreclosure. Now, here's an example of why interest causes inflation. Now, in my first of all, little, how much time we got anyway? Actually, well, we have two hours minus commercial, so we got plenty. Okay, well then, I'll tell you the story about the start. Um, in 1974, I took the mathematics of gambling course at Carleton University in my last year of electrical engineering, and I became so good at poker and blackjack and junketing that I ended up becoming a professional gambler for the last 37 years. If you Google for great Canadian gambler, I come up, or Taj Professor. I mean, every town's got their professor at the card game, but I was the professor at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. And uh, I published a book, Play Hold'em Poker Like a Bookie. I've invented every poker power tool you could dream of to do it with your fingers and toes instead of an online calculator. And uh, I have the highest average win rate in the world. So it's funny that the world's biggest winner at Hold'em Limit Poker would be the world's biggest loser at politics. 
<laughs> 75 elections, 74 losses, one call off. So I just got my message rejected the last election. I ran in the provincial election. And uh, I had an opportunity to register a new political party. Now, the platform's simple. I call it the Argentine Solution. Almost nobody knows about it. But in 19, mid-1980s, when Argentina was broke, well, actually, in 2001, they went broke again. And by 2006, all their foreign debt had been paid off. Didn't make the news. How'd they do that? Well, the union said, you're not going to lay us off. You're going to pay us with small denomination provincial bonds we can use for our hydropower, our um, taxes, our medical, and our licenses. And everybody in town took the bonds as currency, and no unions were laid off, and they could hire more people. And in five years at work, all foreign debt paid off. So the Argentine solution of government levels paying people directly with small denominational bonds that can be used to pay their municipal taxes and bills and stuff is a solution that can be exported to the whole world. And that's why if you YouTube for Prime Minister of the Planet, I'm the only declared candidate <laughs> because I'm coming at the planet with a project that everybody can use. you got to understand, back in 1979, by then, I had been busted for running blackjack games often enough that I got mad, you know. They shouldn't be wasting their time chasing gamblers. So I ran for parliament. And someone asked me about inflation. And I said, well, gee, how come the chips in my casino don't inflate and the coins that the government uses lose their value year after year? The hardware is identical. What's going on? Must be a software problem inflation. So I did an engineering analysis 30 years ago, which is still valid now. You can find it with one search, bank math, and you'll find my analysis with grade line algebra all the way up to control systems, exponential functions, Laplace transforms, proved it every way and backwards. That economics is wrong when it teaches that interest fights inflation because it can also cause inflation. Here's how. Mort gage comes from the French word mort, like mortuary, meaning death. And gage, like old English, I'll gauge my armor in battle, said the white knight to the black knight, which meant that if you lose the battle, you lose your armor. So it's a gamble, it's a bet. So mortgage means death gamble. Now, get ten guys to put up their watch as collateral. Lend them all 10 liters of water at the pump house. They go dump it in the economic pool, and now they all got to come back to the pump house with 11 liters of water, 10% interest, except we didn't print any new water. So, at the end of the game, just like musical chairs, there's 100 units of currency in the pool. The total debt is 110. Now, if you remember the Zeitgeist Addendum movie, they had that equation in their movie. P over P plus I is the problem. We've got the P, our money, in the numerator, but we've got price tags of P plus I that they're trying to recuperate. We can't buy it all, which explains not enough money in our wallets while the store shelves are full. Now, economics, again, teaches that inflation is an increase in money chasing the wallets. I mean, the watches. But well, here's what happens when the nine guys come out of the economic pool with 11. The banker says to the tenth guy, oh, geez, you can't pay. I take your watch. Then he says to the winners, how many liters of currency do you got? A hundred? Gee, now there's only nine watches. Your chips have inflated. Well, your, your currency's inflated. So, economics, well, ec inflation can be either shift A, up on the left, money chasing the watches, or it can be shift B, down on the right, same money chasing less watches. Well, would you believe it? Absolutely no one in the world knows about shift B inflation. Every single monetary reformer who wants to fix the Fed and fix the banking system cannot bring himself to say we have to print more money to fight inflation because he thinks inflation is shift A. Too much money already. 
without realizing that it's actually shifting too much foreclosure. You remember the examples of Germany with the wheelbarrows of money right. chasing the empty store shelves? Right. Well, right now we got empty wallets chasing um, full store shelves. It's not that kind of inflation, too much money going on. It must be the other possibility, shift B, foreclosure of collateral backing up the chips. Now, I can prove that because in 1985, the inflation rate in Argentina was a 1,000% when they crashed and six provincial governments started paying all their employees with provincial bonds. The central government and the IMF screamed, oh no, all these new currencies in circulation will cause more inflation. Shift A, right? And inflation went from a thousand percent all the way down to thirty six percent a year. Because adding money into circulation meant more people paid their debts, less foreclosure, less shift the inflation. So that proved the point that we are not suffering from the inflation that needs interest rates to fight it. We're suffering from the inflation that's caused by interest rates. And if you look around the world, every article about inflation says we must raise interest rates to fight inflation, right, well, take our medicine. Well, let me ask you that, because uh, uh, if, you, if you then increase the money, uh, wouldn't that mean that the money would be worth less? It'd be well, that, that, yeah, but it's like a casino. When a guy walks up to your poker table with a new rack of chips, do you scream, oh, no, inflation? Well, no, because you know the chips are backed up at the cage by new collateral to match it. But are they? I mean, are yeah. they? Are, is, is, is when, money. when did you get a loan without collateral? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, is, is the money out that was being printed, is it really backed up by collateral? Yes, it's backed up by our mortgaged collateral. I can't get a loan without collateral. Can you? Well, all well, right, but if they if, if they print more money without you, know, you can't get it till you come up with collateral. Oh, I I see, I see, I I get it now. They're pretty but money. Collateral is also human uh, labor at work. I see, I see, I see. Okay, so imagine right, now. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, imagine a time bank now, which accepts not only gold and houses but also a promissory note for half a year's worth of labor, okay, a thousand I, hours. All right, so I don't get lost here. I, I want to cut back for a second. So what about like the government simply printing money and then paying bills with it? How would that be? Well, that is exactly the Dennis Kucinich motion right now that's, you know, I, I, I'm amazed at the silence. Have you heard of it? No. Well, Dennis Kucinich has proposed not only like Ron Paul to end the Fed, but he has proposed to use Treasury dollars like Abraham Lincoln did, paid out in exchange for infrastructure without interest, just like good poker chips. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, it's amazing that the silence is deafening when the first politician since Lincoln, well, maybe not, but I mean in recent years, to stand up and say, here's the alternative when we end the Fed, doesn't make the news. But Dennis Kucinich is on target. You know, he's got Abraham Lincoln's solution of having the Treasury run the money. And uh, what can I say? It's a... Uh, working model that's worked before and it can work again because everybody realizes that these new chips issued by government are backed up by our own labor and all new labor. So new chips issued for new labor and then at the end of the year the government counts up how many assets it created and taxes that back as the rate of depreciation and it counts up how many services of doctors and soldiers and police and firemen it bought and taxes that back at the end of the year. Now the perfect model for Lincoln's treasury greenbacks that Kucinich is pushing was King Henry the first in England's tally system. Now, King Henry I, what he did was he took a stick, and on it he printed 10 pounds of gold. Then he split the stick in two. Now, one half was the stub, 
that he kept in treasury, and the other half he handed out to a noble. Here says, here's 10 pounds of gold, now you go spend it and build me a bridge over there. Now the noble, who probably had his own 12 pounds of gold in savings, doesn't mind spending out his actual gold to build the bridge, because he knows he's got this 10 pound of gold tax credit available when he has to pay his tax as the bridge depreciates. So it worked perfectly for 700 years until the banksters talked the government into giving them the power to create the currency and then loan shark it back to the government. Can I tell you a little poem I always do at my demonstration? Sure, sure. Here it is, four minutes. Oh yeah, wait a minute. Um, I ran for Prime Minister of Canada in 93, and I was on a music show with a famous icon, Randy Bachman, taking care of business. And uh, I did this poem for him, he caught it. When you were little, did you ever dream of printing cash? setting up your wallet with some money in a flash. Creating money accurately means to have the plates. The stamping of some paper into notes best demonstrates, or stamping metal into coins, or blitz computerized into your bank account deposits. Checks now authorized. So whether paper, metal, volts electricity, to have the plates is printing money absolutely free. Now, if you printed it to spend, the others would be whale. They'd call it counterfeiting and they'd send you off to jail. But what if government would let you print it up to lend with only what you can collect at interest to spend? If you could print and lend a thousand out at 10%, you'd make 100 interest on printing when you lent. But if you could print out and lend a million bucks you'd get, an extra hundred thousand dollars for your fee on debt. If government stops using its own plates and comes to you, the Fed, a billion printed nets, a hundred million revenue, with everybody being taxed to pay you interest of all the scams in history to have the plates is best. Though never spending, only lending, riches do await to all who with the plates become loan sharks to the state. And though to join the few who thus be profit, you might dream, wake up to see we're the victims of this greedy scheme. Though governments of old had treasury run money plates without the interest of middle minute rip off rates, most governments today to banking industry have lost control of money plates. So interest is now a cost. To service debt, in 99, Canada's request, $320 billion taxed for interest. We're taxed almost $1,000 each per month to pay for interest to holders of our plates they gave away. So, we paupers, we want to have the plates back from the banks and have Treasury create the money for just a printing charge and thanks. The interest we save, the G a month, should be split up, I recommend, for everybody to get a $1,000 monthly dividend, as if you owned a share in the incorporated state, an income guaranteed for life, no question, no debate. So, would you agree, control of money plates by banks should end with all that interest diverted to your monthly dividend? Uh-huh, he said. So basically, we're not going to change anything, tax system, anything, nothing. We're simply going to get the plates back from the private banks, intercept the Brinks truck with our 10000 a year in interest, and give it back to ourselves as a dividend. And that was my promise. Well, and that's the scam. I could, I could see why the powers that be and all the supporters would want you around. <laughs> well, yeah, but the point is... I think the fact that they haven't shot me is that they are willing to let us be free. I mean, look at the future as it is now. It's catastrophe, environmental degradation and destruction. Fukushima, the worst ecological holocaust in history. It might be an extinction event, you know. And uh, it, it's horrible. They're going to die with us. 
So maybe when they run into an engineer running for prime minister of the planet who wants to fix the money and whose policy is global aspirin, ASA, which means amnesty for everybody while we were living in hell of not enough money, and security with an interest-free credit line at the Unilets uh, Bank, and anonymity if Rothschild and Rockefeller want to change their name to Smith. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you, you brought up a point. Why are, you, why are you alive or whatever? It seems to me, I've asked this question, it seems to me that when people speak out of these things and, and, and they have great ideas and they're right on, let's say, it's, it's, it's a, some type of a legal requirement in their own personal uh, paradigm that they, they let the information out to say, well, look, see, they had other options to pick. The people picked our way. We didn't stop them. Look, there's other people with other options. But in reality, the game is rigged because they control the media and they control the spin. But there are no other options. These guys control the right to issue our national chips, and you have to pay them interest to take any chips into the game, and they never printed the 11th chip, well, I mean, yeah, creating but, the death gamble. I mean, the option is that <clears throat> our elected officials could go and create uh, a, a law, and they could... Uh, uh, Assume uh, the Federal Reserve in the United States could be, you know, could be taken over, and they could do everything you say. There's nothing to stop yeah. that except the people that are in place have been bought and paid for by the people you're speaking of, and so therefore they don't really fear it happening because they think they have a lock on uh, the, where the laws Okay, well, you're going to love this. You heard of M Tessa? In Kenya, Safari Com is a telephone network. Now. 90% of the people in Kenya don't have a bank account, right? Okay, they're still on tom-toms. And they're living in small villages, but they all got cell phones now. Which means that M-Pesa enabled people to transfer cell phone minutes from telephone to telephone, and that's what they've been using as their currency. Nine. <laughs> all right? Just like Ithaca Hours is trading time in Arabia now. They're using telephone cards, the credit cards, as cash, as currency. So... I'm saying the third world are already able to transfer minutes of phone as their currency, but we in the first world cannot yet. You wonder why? Because we still got stuff the bankers want to steal. And in Africa, it's already all gone. Mm. So that's why they can use that incredible new technology, and we have to buy in with cash, which we have to get at loan sharks. It, and they can transfer their phone minutes around to get the same deals done. I, Isn't you know, that neat? Uh, well, so the, I, bank, so it was, the point is every deal done with a barter transaction means the banksters get no interest. Now, people say barter, that's tax evasion. No, 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 no. It's interest evasion. You don't mind paying your taxes on a legitimate deal if you can do the deal, but why pay interest on it? That's what will save you. And so they black and barter deals by saying it's a tax evasion scheme when the actual advantage of the using a barter currency is that you're not paying interest to use it. And that is the true. Now, best of all, at my Facebook page, if you look at my info page, I've set up my time bank account. Now, it says, has my offers, which are, I play accordion concerts at all folks' homes, and I can do translation, and I put in lots of time on the effort I'm proud of, and uh, wants, and I want, oh, you know, hit old history books and accommodations when I travel, because in 99, I traveled throughout Europe, and 39 nights out of 40, I paid with an IOU for a night back in Canada, instead of cash. But in France, they pay themselves 60 green francs an hour in their système de charge locale. That is their local employment trading soft systems. It's let's in English and sell in French. And in Germany, in their touch rings, they trade uh, 20 green marks per hour. And in Canada, we do 12 green dollars an hour. And in Ithaca, it's 10 American dollars an hour. But between countries, we trade time. So if you go look at my Facebook page, account info, you'll see that I owe 195 hours for 939 nights in Europe. 
and uh, I've been putting in hours doing concerts, but if someone comes from Europe and says, hey, can you put me up and take my IOU, I'll go. If I can't, I'll find someone who likes my concerts who will. So I put in my time back to the community, and anybody can create their own online time bank job by just announcing some 12-year-old kid, I'll be down at that park every weekend for three hours, picking up every piece of cigarette butt dog shit bug gum wrappers and cleaning the park. And guess what? When that kid says, I'm coming to your town next year, can you people put me up? Who's going to think this kid's a user? Because I know use will be good. Right. Absolutely. I'm going to get right into that. We are live talking with John Turville, live from Canada. Uh, the anti-poverty engineer got some great ideas. And uh, welcome back, John. I, You know, I, Thanks. you were talking about this idea of uh, creating our own money uh, taking it in our own hands, whether it be the, the United States takes over the Federal Reserve or, or this competing currency. But you're getting down to us making our own currency. And it's, uh, I, I traveled to uh, to Europe uh, in, in the early, before I did the show. And I, uh, when I stayed at people's houses that I met, uh, the actual, you stay by my house. And when I come to America sometime, I stay by your house. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. whatever happened to that concept of, 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 of that as idea of a currency. We're still doing it, except now we have a huge database of different time banks in 61 countries around the planet. And with that lead, you contact someone in the town where you're going and simply email them a request Will someone put you up in exchange for your IOU for a night back in the United States, which you will publish online and acknowledge that you owe them? That's it. I mean, that's, that's the, you know, I tell you, great ideas are simple. It's the, it's the way to... Yes, keep it simple, stupid. Right. I'm an engineer. <laughs> but but the, uh, when things become complicated is when you want to take it and make it your way or make it a different way, and then you have to rearrange it in gymnastics and, and whatnot to uh, get away from the simplicity of it. No, I mean, this is as simple as poker chips backed up by time, you know. Interest on money really gums up and complicates the thing and turns what is a simple tool, a poker chip, into a, ma a, a mammon-like god that people worship and they'll kill for it, you know? Well, they'll I mean, kill for poker chip. Yeah, let's say, I mean, the idea of the poker chip, though, if I could use that analog and uh, the... Are you getting static on my line? Yes, I am. Uh, okay, why don't I switch phones? Okay. Give me a second. All right. All right people can go to johnturnmel.com. It's T-U-R-M-E-L. Uh, to see more of his his uh, stuff and his Facebook is be Facebook. Okay, here I am back. Okay, that's much better. Yeah. Um. Uh, so so the idea about the poker chip it's based on that people are going to bet, gamble, and lose money, and therefore pay the house. So no, no, we're not talking about give the gamble. We're talking about the chips. Right, well, I'm saying, but the people who are providing the chips, if for example the the house who's providing the chips. Uh, does not get their quotia of, of winning, then eventually... You know, the, 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 the house takes a service charge. It's like in a poker game. When I play poker, I'm a professional poker player. Um, I'm allowed to play in the casino because I'm winning from the other nine poker players. Oh, hang on. That's my mother, my ailing mother. Ten seconds. Oh, sure, sure, of course. And the Facebook is facebook.com slash John Turnmill. It's J O H N dot T-U-R-M-E-L. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah, where were we? I mean, I was, I, I was saying that the house itself is depending upon people losing to make that... Uh, uh, well, it, it, under the mortgage game, yes, but in, in a service charge banking system, well, here's the difference. We'll call it Interest Island and Service Charge Island. Now, you've already been on Interest Island where they play mortgage and one guy gets knocked out of the game and loses his house. Now, I'm not, I do this thing at dinner parties. I get everybody to, uh, first of all, I get some beans or something as currency, and I get some tokens to represent food, clothing, housing, and then I get everybody to put up their watches collateral, and I lend them all 10 beans. 
beans now with their ten beans they purchase a product their bakers uh, or butchers or whatever house makers clothing makers and then they have to put it for sale for eleven well I've got a hundred beans in the in the bowl and they've all got a hundred and ten price tags they're trying to recuperate so I take the two tailors and I flip and I say, the economy's going to pick one of you two and buy from you. So the first guy heads, he wins. So he puts his uh, clothes token back into the economy, sells it, and takes out 11. Then I take two butchers, flip a coin, they pick him. Then I take two of those. Then I take the butcher or the tailor, flip a coin, the economy picked the butcher. And I take these two. And at the end of the game, one guy's left with his stuff unsold. And nine guys have recuperated their 11, and I move in, take his watch, knock him out of the game. Right. Now, on Service Charge Island, everybody puts up their watch as collateral. I, the banker, lend them all 11 chips right away, and I take my interest back up front as a service charge in money created in the pool. Now, there's a debt of 110, but there's 110 chips in the pool because I, the banker, am one of the buyers, too. Now, everybody ends up selling all their products. The banker ends up paid, and everybody goes home at the end of the night. So, by paying our interest up front and borrowing enough to pay the banker's service charge up front, we could solve the usury death or gamble. All right, I like this example, but I didn't get it. So is there another way, okay. another example you can give me? Um, well, because I'm one game, service. everybody borrowed 10, everybody owed 11. One game, everybody borrowed 11, and everybody owed 11. Yeah, but how does the interest, uh, how does the, how do you get the service charge? Then? Where does that come from? Well, I'm saying that... You, the borrower, when you come on service charge account, instead of borrowing 10, you borrow 11. Then you give the banker one back right away. Either way, you're going to owe 11. But on interest island, there's only 10 in circulation. But on this island, there's the 10 plus the one you just gave to the banker in circulation for the banker, and you can get it back off of the banker. But in the interest island, there's no way to come up with the 11th chip. But on service charge island, the eleventh chip is what the banker got paid. Right, so the, the banker creates these eleven. That's right. Just like he creates the ten and demands eleven, here he creates eleven and demands eleven. Oh, okay. He demands eleven back. Yeah, but he's paid one, so we're going to have to earn it off him, won't we? Like everybody else. So we end up dumping eleven into the economic pool, one to the banker, his pay. And now it matches the amount of money in price tag. Yep. So that is how a service charge banking system would solve knocking people into foreclosure. And it would be as easy as everybody borrowing enough in their original loan and immediately paying the banker his interest. Now they can earn it back off them. But if they wait to make the payment at the end of the cycle, uh-oh, death gamble, someone's knocked out of the game. So it's a neat angle if you want to try and fix it that way. But the easiest way is to just switch from interest to a service charge. When you get your bank statement, if you look at it, there's two numbers. There's interest and service charge. Well, imagine the programming turning okay, interest right, well, let me, to let me, zero. Let me stop you there. So in the service charge example, what really is going to make it worth good is rather than buying, borrowing $100,000 for a house and paying back $250,000, you're going to borrow $100,000 from a house and pay back like a thousand. 110. Yes, 110. Right. Okay, you're going to. And you only pay the banker a one-time service charge, not a forever loan shark usury rate. <laughs> so you're so you're paying like 10,000, and what you're going to do is you're going to go out into the world and use your your business. To make, to, that ten, to make that 10000 from the pool. And, and, and from the banker's share of the pool. And, and he, may, he may be involved in it because uh, he may be buying. He wants to eat, too. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I guess what we're saying here is that uh, you're, you're taking the interest from being compounded to be a huge amount to a much smaller little piece up front. Well, and, but more than that, I'm making it payable when previously it was unpayable and cost foreclosure. 
In a service charge economy, no foreclosures. The banker gets his cut of the food and the goodies because he got paid up front. Everybody else got back 10 worth of goodies. And everybody went home at the end of the night, no foreclosures. So yeah, see, what I, a yeah, difference. I, and I didn't realize, this, this has only uh, been the last couple of years that I realized that our system is based on foreclosures. I mean, I, it never dawned on me that in order for the, at the end, it's like, it's like musical chairs, you, you keep moving the chairs away and eventually, uh, you know, there's none left. I never realized that it was based on foreclosing. And that was part yeah, of the real model. It's like when I worked at this company, this company was... Uh, if any made candies, it was uh, no debt. It, it, it made six uh, percent profit per year, uh, increase in sales, I should say. They did nothing but put out nice, fine candy. Well, a corporation bought them and leveraged them out and, and dumped the whole thing. And I realized at that point that that business model that corporation did, their intention was to do just what happened: was to pull all the equity out of it, leverage it up to the hill, hmm. and then crash it. And that is a actual, real, viable. Business, business strategy. And it's yeah. insane. It's terrible, isn't it? It's insane. It is, because, yeah, but the point is, the rules of the game, trying to come up with something that's not there is insane. And when the re end result is financial death, which means no life support tickets anymore and homelessness and real poverty, people will cheat and they will do ugly stuff to not be the loser in the game. Yeah. And that's why... All That's business all right now. is so corrupt. Everybody cuts corners. Hey, how do you feel about all your nuclear reactors being built by the lowest bidder? Yeah. The best guy <laughs> at cutting corners, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's all mediocrity is a function of the usury banking system. And I blame the Rothschild family for being in charge of the banking system for the past 200 years and putting us in this stinking mess we were in. So go see my YouTube <laughs> search for Termel and Evelyn Rothschild where I put the boots for him for hogging all the life support tickets so that when the bus left with the kids in my class to go to a project or a field trip somewhere, the seats were empty with the poor kids who couldn't go because the rich kids were hogging all the tickets. So what a waste. And uh, I mean, so I'm uh, resentful that we could have had heaven on this planet a century ago when we had robots and technology and electricity and aviation starting and mechanical advantage and it got all turned into a century of death and gore and warfare. You know, so now, 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 these people this, who ran the money are responsible for the results. Oh, right. And, I, I, uh, I, would, I would agree with that. However, And I want to forgive them and get on with heaven. <laughs> I mean, I agree with that. However, there, there's one thing about it. We got to where we got because basically, if I could say we being the 99%, as the phrase goes, allowed the 1%. Now, yeah, they were clever. They uh, uh, they hypnotized. They got people distracted. They did all these other they They, they, they tried to recruit people to get on board with their greed system and so on. But it seems to me that the change, would, we'd have to have two things. One, we'd have to have a mass awareness of this, which we're talking about. And B, we'd have to be able to discern and deal with sociopaths and psychopaths. Well, maybe otherwise, not. Otherwise, maybe the next not. system... Did the, people be... in Africa, did the people in Africa have to deal with angry banksters when they got off their currency and started using no, their no, own... No, no, what no. What, what I meant was that... This cycle will start all over again because sociopaths, psychopaths are attracted to power. They're clever or smart or intelligent. I and don't see how they can pull it off. I'm just, I explained how the, how large and larger, larger and larger databases like Craigslist, Twitter, Facebook, they're all building social currencies. They just haven't linked to the time standard yet. But when they do, then all their currencies become compatible with every other time bank on the planet, as well as every other database that thinks in time banking, in trading hours. Now, don't forget, it's a volunteer hour. A doctor can charge five hours per hour in his office as a pro, but when he's cleaning the park with his grandson, he's getting the same one-hour volunteer as everybody else. Now, what, what, I'm, what I'm kind of meaning here is I understand that, but it seems that 
uh, the powers that be aren't going to go, oh, well, 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 we had our, we had our run. It's been pretty good. And just go home. There's going to be well, no, resistance. I think they, I, we earlier said we think they are. I'm saying that I have been shot a lot before I unleashed my Let's Freeware onto the world. Say, and now it's too late to take back. They could have stopped me, and they didn't. And they, how did I get invited to the United Nations to do the speech on banking so that Unilex has been on the agenda? I mean, it's just well, here, yeah. too weird, too weird that an honest money reformer could have snuck into these places without their connivance and okay. I'm not saying that the banksters can help me or reformers because I believe they've all got horrible secrets that the cabal could expose them with. And they're all, would you, if you were running an evil cabal, let anybody come in you didn't have something on? Right, well, let me, let me stop right. for a second. So I mean, all, what, 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 so I'm, they can't, yeah. what, what I'm saying, though, is that it sounds to me like uh, they have uh, plans. Uh, so it's like we have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. And if it goes this way, we do this. I don't think so. I think they're not competent to handle this world. It's already blown up in their faces. Well, I, well, I, I, look, I'm, I'm, on, I'm hoping. I'm on your side, too. I'm just trying to look at it like uh, if you're familiar with the, uh, I think it was the, the second Matrix movie. I love the first one. And then in the, it's almost like they, they, realized what the first one was saying and he turned or turned it around the other ones but at one point oh, okay. the programmer has already figured out a scenario for every possibility and that it's a, it all, all it is is what scenario will we choose com, uh, will choose what scenario they use and in the back backing up everything they could simply uh, whether it be through biological warfare or radiation or whatever they can set up all this stuff out here and then just go down to their underground bases and live for 100, 200, 300 years and yeah, come but, back out again. Yeah, but why would they want to go live underground when they got a money reformer who wants to fix the planet's money system and then not let anybody shoot them and just get on with having a good time in heaven? Well, you know? I, I, mean, I, Jesus. I mean, it's a good example. The, the old Dante thing, it's better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. And, and then well, it's a sociopath, they, psychopath. Okay wants to okay. power, okay. they want to lead, they'd rather live in a uh, post-apocalyptic world in charge uh, than live, a, live in a world where regular people are, are, are having a good time. I mean, no, no, don't look at it that way. you got to look at it. Do they want to live in a world that's destroyed and they're living underground like moles? Or do they want to live in a world above that's happy, but they have to give up murderous authority? I, and I'm telling you, from a psychopathic point of view, they would rather... Do them all. I don't think that the cabal of the top 300 are psychopaths. I think they're like riding a tiger by the tail. There's nothing they can do to change anything. And they're probably in their back recesses of their heart hoping that I can fix the thing and that nobody's going to stop me because they ignore us throughout most of the history unless we became effective and they shot Lincoln and they shot Kennedy and, you know. But I mean, in a case like this, we're approaching a technology where the switch is as easy as reprogramming software. We are dealing with faulty bank computer software. I guess. And it's as easy to fix as a switch in the disk. So I'm saying that the main Mayan prophecy is possible by next year, except we're not going to go from a, our present world to a more hellish world. We're going to go from our present hellish world to a heavenly world just by switching the disks. And I think they're going to let us do it. I don't think they're looking forward to a new clean up, clean up nuclear waste for the rest of their history because they're using the cheapest cut the corners bidders. You know, when we can have excellence if we divert the interest to paying the workers. And when we need excellence when we're dealing with stuff like nuclear. But we're going to clean up, decommission nuclear, you know, and when there's enough money for all the clean energies, the problems are gone. So really, so, really, this, this is going to hinge on that the, the new system will give amnesty to the guys who have been murder, murdering, killing, raping. And I'm perfectly willing to do that because they're not as bad as the banksters who paid them. And I'm willing to forgive and forget that okay, right, right. if not, they will set us free and let us get on with heaven. I mean, I'm not criticizing. I'm just I'm trying to put it out 
in, in, in a, but that's my angle. I mean, the reformers out there who are threatening to hurt them because of the horrors they've done to us when we could have been living in heaven for a hundred years already, a decade's worth of wealth, you know, they're not going to let them win. But me, I'm saying I just want to get on with heaven and have fun. So, I mean, I'm not going to shoot anybody. I'm just going to give everybody their amnesty, their security, and their anonymity, and let's just leave, leave the decisions on what happened in hell when we were living under the laws of the jungle and everybody was prostituting themselves to survive. We're going to forget all that. Just leave it in the back records and deal with God when you die. We're going to get on with heaven. I mean, that's why I don't, you know, uh, I can forget from the lowliest torture to the top banker who paid for it all and just say, let's fix it and get on with the party. No, I, I'm you know, with I don't you. Want to, I'm with you. The, I, I don't want war crime trials, you know. Oh, I, I'm with you, except there, there's two things that, that that stick in the back. Is one, will they believe it? And two, will the, will the masses, which have a big history, the old French Revolution, will the masses actually allow uh, them, you know, once this all comes out, will, will it actually go along with it? Will, would there be, because the, the masses are, are, are have, there's a, there's a percentage of psychopaths too, it's just that they're not smart, smart enough to join the, you know, the, the white shoe guys. And so I'm, I'm wondering if they would believe it, and two, would the people actually go along with it? Well, you see, it doesn't matter whether they believe it. When all of a sudden in Argentina the system crashed, people had no choice. They either went down to join the barter fair and take out a loan of some creditos based on 100 hours of labor if they wanted to go buy stuff in the barter fair. They had no choice. Seven million people in six months went from a half a million to seven million people at when this, after the system crashed using private kitty toes and barter fairs, and that saved them. So it didn't make the news, but I got 27 videos at my, uh, at my uh, um, YouTube uh, channel on the whole development in Argentina. You know, when they paid off all their foreign debt, how come it didn't make the news, you know? But anyway, it worked for them, and we've got a history. You want to have a little bit of history? i got some poetry here. Well, we got about a we got about a, uh, a minute and a half. All right. Well, no, no. Let's save it for the next for the, after okay. the commercial because it's about five six minutes. All right. Well, let, let me post. let me. I guess what I'm having trouble with is is my idea of the people running thing is the you know for example everyone's had a boss who is incapable of doing his job but tells everybody what to do and the reason why they were hired is that because they could pay them less because part of their pay was literally being able to tell people what to do. So if you actually take away the ability for them to tell everyone what to do, that's taking away a percentage of their energy, their pay. And I just so I don't think... Well, so those are the kind of people you don't want to be too energetic anyway, right? Right, but, you know, uh, since they have a lot of the, uh, uh, the weapons of destruction and, and whatnot, uh, you know, I, it, it's almost like... I would, I wanted to be Nobody can use a nuke because it's going to spread everywhere. I mean, weapons of mass destruction, come on now. I mean, it's just. Look, so look, they've never been used. In, well, let, let me well, let's stop. Take a break. I'm going to come back and talk about Fukushima. All right, well, I have plenty of evidence that that actually was an attack. It literally was purposely done to let that out. But hold on. We'll take a break. Okay. All right, we are talking with John Turnmill as he has uh, been laying out his cases to how to turn the page, as it will, to go to a uh, interest-less system using a service charge, uh, as an example, to uh, uh, have the money be spread out about, among, amongst ourselves and uh, how the, the uh, powers that be would, uh, would, would handle this idea. And welcome back, John. I guess what I was, Hi there. What I was saying earlier is that uh, there's a lot of evidence. I had a guy on the show who was who has recently disappeared from giving this evidence, but uh, he uh, proved, I thought, with, with a, you know, a good, uh, a good case that the events in, uh, in uh, uh, Fukushima were actually an attack. There were bombs that went off on there, and he showed where the bombs were, and he showed bombs, the actual pictures of where he thought they were. And you know, what do you think the purpose of it is? Uh, a catastrophe? The, the intimidation of Japan, uh, for one, because they were allegedly... Yeah, we're the ones, we're, the, we're downwind. 
I mean, people in Seattle got hit with 150 hot particles in April. That means Vancouver, too. Baby deaths have already skyrocketed 200% in Canada. I mean, we're downwind. How is this hurting Japan that way? Yeah, they're, they're, they're closer, but I mean, this is hitting us. I understand, really. I understand that, but the point is is that when you're dealing with a psychopath, which is our, what the rulers are in this world. Uh, I, 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 I don't want to go there. I know you I don't mean, want that's to. Just, that's like saying, okay, we just can't do anything. I, well, I, you know... I, I like your plan, believe me, but we're faking it. Well, actually, let me, let me cheer you up a little then. Okay. This is how fast it can be done. In Canada, we could log on to the Bank of Canada's computer, who are now going to open up a PayPal software. All right? And instead of accepting just your Visa card, they're also going to accept 100 hours of labor. And you can pay it back with either your cash or your labor by working on on a government project. Now, in the United States, same idea. You would be able to log on to the U.S. Treasury PayPal. Well, hold you on. Would... We stop there, though. You're, are you saying that this is pending? Because I think there's no chance no, I'm that would happen. I'm just saying, it's just, okay, it doesn't have to. PayPal could do it. PayPal, it doesn't have to be. PayPal could no run way. the United States. What? There's no way PayPal will do that. All they would have, anybody, I mean, anybody could start another PayPal which accepts both there, are other ones, there are other ones that are doing this. I've had a guest that I'm talking about the uh, uh, Bitcoins and... No, no, no. Bitco Bitcoin's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme based on nothing. We're talking time-based currency, 60-second right. minutes that never changes. Right, and there's there's these other systems that do that. My, my point is, is that uh, to now, all the normal systems, i.e. PayPal, whatever, has completely rejected all of that. Well, wait a minute, I'm just saying, while you and I start, while we get their software and we add a new category of buying, not just Visa or and Cash what, or MasterCard, but time. What would stop, and, and, and believe me, I, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm coming at you, I'm loving, but what would stop the uh, IRS from declaring that tax evasion? It's not. You, you, you declare it. It's, a, it's an open transaction. You, oh, if it's your business, you've got to treat it like cash. We're not evading our taxes. Let to, me give you a great example. You're going to wait, 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 wait. I mean, here, here's, the, here's what I mean. Is the Tom Kennedy. I'll tell you about his story. Okay, later, go. Well, his, uh, the, the thing I'm talking about is that say you went to stay at someone's house, and then they came and stayed at your house. The calculated value of that would be what would it cost to stay in a hotel uh, in the area, that would be the okay. cost that the, the people would be paying you and vice versa, and okay. that money would be taxed. Okay. So like, so I'm just going to make up numbers for the heck of it. Say you spew it. You, you know, know I, I've accepted that. Now let me go to my example, because I've accepted your premise, okay? Okay. It's taxable. Now, my friend Tom Kennedy was a school teacher, and like most people with mortgages and three kids in a house, he was, you know, paycheck to paycheck. But he joined the Ottawa Let system and he became the biggest trader. He did 3000 bucks worth of extra business tutoring, everything in a year. Now, he had to declare it because he's a teacher. So he declared this extra income and he owed 1000 bucks more tax on it. But notice, the three grand in green that he earned allowed him to spend that and leave three grand extra in his teacher's salary in his bank account with which to pay the one in income tax. So when you do a barter transaction, you are basically using the alternate currency to take the place of the stuff in your cash account, freeing it up for other uses. The Sparta effect. Oh, I, oh do I have it here? Yes, here it goes. The Spartan King Lysurgis said, all those who journey made shall buy in with their gold for chips of clay in town to trade. Whatever chips they have when leaving with our gold will pay, but we shall profit from the interest for time of stay. So you get it? The Sparta effect, it's like the, you heard of Berkshire's, um, Toronto dollars. Um, there are a lot of these community currencies that are cash buy-in. They're okay, too, but they're weak. They're not as strong as time buy-in because not lots of people can join with they have to buy in the cash. But nevertheless, most of them will give you a premium if you buy in. Like, uh, you know, you buy in for $100 Toronto dollars, and they'll give you 110 
hundred and cash gets you one ten, but you gotta shop in the local stores, not at Walmart, in the participating merchants who will give you this ten percent premium to get your business. So that is how these cash buying community currencies work. Now, whenever I comment on them, and when a new one comes up, I go leave a comment and say, gee, it's too bad you guys don't only have your cash buying chips where they got a premium, but you don't start some time buying chips too. So you can run both side by side, time buying and cash buying with a premium. And so both community currency models are valid, but the time buy-in like Ithaca hours, the Banco Las Palmas in Brazil, this is they are just simply running their own chips, making interest free loans and expanding like crazy because the new chips are backed up by new production. So that's what we have to do too. And, and we can do it P2P, person to person, like I do with my Facebook page. I got to talk people into taking my IOUs for a night back in Brantford because I guarantee you want to come up here, I'll find somewhere to put you, even if it's my room, if you put me up too. It's, and the beauty of Lex Systems, I've got quite a few. You go to my site, my old girlfriend, Pauline. Well, trip reports when we investigated lessons around the world, and poor people feel empowered, and they're not going to stiff you no more because they have the respect of the group that everybody trusts. You'll put the time back you took. It's not like a fifty-dollar bill that a lot of guys will stiff you for because it's you, you know, needed for the rent. But this five-hour bill is different. They could put in the spare time they all got lost of. So there are almost no defaults in a time bank system. And that's the wonderful thing about them. And people report, oh, having a network of people I can call on is to solve all my headaches, you know? Because one lady in Germany said, because the toughest thing to do is how do you ask people for help when you run out of money and you were used to having money and cutting checks for anything fixed you need? And to have a, a directory of people in a network I can call made my life Heaven. Well, what's interesting is, okay, quick story, I'll step away, I want to end up at the UN. So here we go. In 93, I'm a professional gambler, and I've tried to legalize gambling in Canada for many years, been busted many times. They joked my cell at the Ottawa police station had a revolving door. But in 1988, I got busted in 89, I beat the charge, found a way to run blackjack legally. Next thing you know, I had an underground 28-table casino, and they let me run it for a year and a half before they changed the wording of the law and busted me and shut me down. But I made over a million bucks and I had to spend it before they grabbed it as proceeds of crime, and I got quarter of the week. I knew they wouldn't let me keep it, so I spent it all, and I founded a political party, ran for prime minister, more candidates than the Greens, pushing wet system across Canada. Then in 2000, they had the Millennium Assembly, and because I went for prime minister, I was invited as a non-governmental organization to attend. So I got then, when I got there, I got an invitation to do the speech on the banking system of the new millennium. Because back to my um, first time I ran in Parliament, well, I figured out that something wrong with the government's chips and they were screwing it up by charging interest. So I kept running an election after election after election after election, proposing we reprogram the bank's computers to operate on a pure service charge and abolish the interest charge. So, and the election, so I got the Guinness Book of Records too, and now I'm up at 75 uh, elections and 74 losses and one, one call off. But the gambling was important because it financed all my activities, but I found my way to run it legally, made my million bucks, ran my candidate, got to the UN, and the invitation came from a committee on globalization because the clerk had recognized me as the person who financed the first local employment trading green dollar software, and she was a single mother from... New Zealand or Australia, don't I forget, I think it was Australia, and she had joined her local let when she was a single mother and it had helped her so much that when she moved to her second town, there was one year too, and she, and she was moving to I think Perth, right, Australia, and she said she was going to join the third, so she told the globalization chairwoman, here is something that works that helped me, this network of people in a directory that we can all call. and. 
we should really do something. So he invited me to do the speech on banking system, and I explained how the let system could be expanded to the whole world with time as the collateral numeraire. That everything else is measured in time, not in chickens or bulls or whatever or oil. And uh, these ladies and one trapper named Fried uh, something from Sweden who just couldn't help applauding every time Let's came up. They got this thing put on the Millennium Declaration Resolution C6 to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. Now, the editors at the UN cut out the words Unilex interest-free because it was actually an interest-free Unilex time-based currency, a United Nations international and local employment trading software. So, but still, they left in time-based currency, which automatically means inflation-free, because it's always 60 minutes. And the UNILEX you can find in the background documentation where they said the time standard of money should be adopted. So that's kind of neat to find out that on the Millennium Declaration is a hope for humanity to end up with a time-based currency. And now with the minutes being traded in Africa with their cell phones as the perfect machine for it, and as, you know, uh, Ithaca hours, still paper, but still very viable and useful and handy, and all these other changes that are happening, the banksters are in big trouble. They are going to be cut out of their vigorish. Every transaction done by Tom Kennedy with his 3000 bucks extra stuff, they didn't get no big on that. He didn't have to borrow money to, you know, to make those payments. He left the money in the bank, and he benefited of the interest. He could take that spare two Gs that he didn't spend and pay down his cash debt. And that's what doing barter does. It frees up your federal cash to pay down your debts. It's not a tax evasion system. They only say that to scare people away from it. But every deal you do with barter, you're saving interest. And that's the big killer in, in the overall game. So, and you got five, six minutes for my historical poem, though. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I also have a lot of questions, but... Uh, All right, let's do the questions first. We've got lots of time. All right, well, see, the, I was I mean, just kicking around math in my head, and again, I understand saving the interest. Uh, if I have a, a Saturday off, I'm going to trade. Uh, I'll, I'll cut this guy's lawn, and he'll come fix my gutters. All right. Yes. The problem with that, in my mind, is I'd have to pay someone to fix my gutters, and he'd have to pay for someone to fix his, his lawn. So the, the money. Let's say it was an even exchange, just to make it easy. You know, it's going to be fifty dollars yeah. a piece. Yeah. Right, so he, you both left your cash in the bank. Right. He hands me fifty. You both left your paychecks in the bank. And you both used your own IOU for right. while your paychecks remained in your bank account. Right, I understand. So I would have paid him fifty, and he would have paid That's me. That's right. 50. It would have been gone from your bank. And so, but then he would have paid me fifty, and it goes back to the bank. And it would have been gone from his bank. Yeah, I know. He takes it from his. He gives it to me. I take it from mine. I give it to That's him. That's right. And we put it back in That's the bank. That's right. And you're paying interest. Both of you sharing it while it's out of the bank. Yeah, okay, for a day. For probably a day. in a current account with no interest on it anyway, right. so it's costing you interest. The point is, if you substitute an alternate currency, you're going to end up owing the same taxation as if you've done cash deals, except you're going to have left your cash in the bank and share no interest savings. Yeah, and, and, then, and then technically, with this system, technically, uh, he'd have to keep track of that 50 that he he made uh, as a income, in which case, yeah. I mean, granted, granted, I mean, I have a business here with the radio station, and it just so happens that yeah. I spend more right. than I make, so it's pretty easy okay. to do my taxes. But uh, if if you're if you're self-employed uh, doing this thing, uh, when you take all the tax thing, I think the only advantage of the system is to not have the taxes. Well, we, no, you, you have to pay the taxes. Either way, whether you do the deal with your cash account or you do the, the deal with your let's account, either way, you're going to owe the taxes from your cash account. Technically, yeah, but what... what but my way, you're left with a bunch of cash in your cash account. Only the tax... Tom Kennedy only paid out 1000 in tax. The other two remained in his account. But to me, it's... That's the advantage. I mean, to me, uh, in my example, which is fictitious, I understand, 
But no, with it's perfect. The, it was a perfect one. With each of us giving each other fifty dollars, it doesn't matter. What doesn't matter? Because if I took fifty out, gave it to him, he gave me his yeah. fifty, I put it back in. You both owe tax on the deals too. Right. And if I went and cut the lawn, he did the thing, we didn't exchange yeah. cash, we did ours, yeah. you still yeah. want the same. Except that if you left the fifty dollar in the bank right. instead of pay, if you left the fifty federal in the bank and you substituted your own well, then the 50 federal in the bank is making the interest. Yeah, yeah, 1.2% 1, 1. interest. Well, the pro yeah. put it this way. Then pay down your debt. Pay down your 20% debt, okay? Well, Tom that, Kennedy, that by is, that is good. Well, that's it. Tom Kennedy substituted three grand in local currency for his purchases, thereby by earning three grand. He was one on, and he now has a free three grand in his account to pay the one, and the other two he pays off his debt, his credit cards, the high interest stuff. That's how people get out of debt with barter. I mean. Pay all the taxes you want. It's the money you left in your cash account that you pay down your debts because you paid for some of your living with extra labor that you created that work yourself. Me, eh? Yeah. That's the advantage okay. of barter they want to hide. All right, let me people. ask you something. There's somebody in the chat room has said this several times. I'm going to quote them. Okay, ask about eyes to see and ears to hear. Yeah, that's great. So what does that's, that mean? I can, that's a long story. Oh. That's Jesus. Right, That's I, Jesus who beat up the bankers in the temple. Now, I'm going to, I got, in 1995, I was voted Internet Proof of the Month for the whole planet for saying that Jesus spoke in differential equations. Whoa, what does that mean? Well, oh, it's such a great story, and I even got it in verse, you know, but it's like the 10 minutes. Um... How much time we got left? Don't well, we? we only got about five, so maybe we can come out on the other side uh, with that. Well, let's see if I can do the historical stuff in five, okay? okay? All right. All right. So, this is from my johntermell.com slash allpoems.htm. All my things end with htm, and they all start with johntermell.com. So, all, te all poems. No, dot text. Sorry, it's special. <laughs> historical examples. The record most successful case, use of you know, uh, government money, was in the British Isle, where tallies, sticks of money, that's King Henry one would style. Accountants in the Treasury would split the stick in two, one half would be the money and the other half its due. A tally worth a pound of gold to pay the king's expense, the other half amounted to taxation, that made sense. The tax collectors through the land all had an easy way, since people had their tallies, and enough, the tax to pay. The tallies funded projects that could pay for everything, with tallies matching tax, a hero, King Henry, Henry Wonder King. For over 700 years, the tallies were in use, but having lost control of money, now it's come to excuse. Antiquity. In 3rd millennium B.C., King Hammerary Great, no fractional reserve checking accounts, there's no debate. B.C. 546, Bank of Lydia was closed as pressed. We'll use play chips instead of gold and save the interest. Soon boring times were summoned with Prince Cyrus at the head who crushed the little country bank, King Croesus soon was dead. The Spartan king, Lysurgis, said, all those who dirty make shall buy him with their gold for chips and play in town to trade. Whatever chips they have when leading, with our gold we'll pay, but we shall profit from the interest for time of stay. <laughs> so we used the coinage bronze and set financial rules. The money system's tricky, so I must protect the fools. No Greek for long made pledge to slavery himself or kin. To let our families be changed is more than mortal sin. In B.C. 338, the Roman Empire took off with I.S. Grave copper coins, which paid for growth enough. Recently, not only were other abolitionists in Bible days abolish interest rates, but there were many more for abolition, I can pray. The kings and popes of Middle Ages were the ones to say that interest was evil, but since then they've lost their way. Some presidents who have this populist idea knew, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and Andrew Jackson, too. Some brilliant scientific men were also of accord with Franklin. There was Thomas Edison and Henry Ford. The native North American civilization's great did wampum, promissory, IOU beads advocate. All issued IOU beads for their horses, hides, and seeds. Each mark on deed meant value personally guaranteed. 
the whites said they would they should put away their private currency. So braves lined up with whites at unemployment agency. Forced to use white currency, they had to play the game. And in the larger game of nations, they came out so lame. Our forebears' generations called it work be on a date where men could pay their taxes with some service to the state. They built the roads that carved the land, the bridges over blue. To those who said they needed gold, they proved it wasn't true. Now look at how it works today. Let's get it understood. Replacing wood in tallies now is paper pressed of wood. Two notes used in America can clearly show the way. Both legal tender now down south. They can be spent today. United States note issued by nation's treasury and Federal Reserve note, which is bankers' currency. Oh, and for the while, I had a copy of the $2 uh, U.S. note issued by Kennedy, and I put the $2 federal note beside it to show the difference. So, um, their fronts are very similar, except the name they state. Their backs are very different. It means another plate. The Treasury provided notes for federal expense and taxed them back to balance books with numbers that made sense. In 1913, other plates were given to the bank. Creation of the money, they gave politicians thanks. The government had given banks permission to create a batch of brand new money to be lent at interest rate. The government then borrowed from them, and at their request, the Congress passed the income tax to pay them interest. When Congressman objected, Louis T. McFadden loud, the greatest crime in history, he said with head unbowed. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Ten dollars out, a running back. It often takes a while. But after years, the end results of melancholy style. The money from the treasury, its use would almost cease. To pay the interest to banks, the taxes did increase. And when we ask the treasury, why is it never used? Hey, Kucinich wants to. Uh, used. <laughs> when I do that, why do I do that? Come on. Uh, the answer, we get silence and an attitude being used. So to the state, the bulk of the American supply is borrowed from the bank at rates that make debts multiply. All governments to service debt by taxing you and me instead of lending treasury created interest free. I see no reason for a tax to pay them interest when use of plates by treasury would lower taxes best. The money from the Treasury was used down south before. The greenbacks used by Lincoln paid to win the Civil War. The Continentals did their job until King George did state. There'll be no use of your own plates for gold you have to wait. But we've been told that the revolt was overtaxed for tea. Ben Franklin said the war is because they took our currency. History. Yeah, now... I'm still, uh, we'll come back, we'll get into the other thing. Uh, Fair enough. But uh, I don't know if I'm uh, too dense here. I mean, I'm pretty uh, pretty intelligent. I can get things. It just seems like the only advantage to this system is the lack of interest and the lack yeah. of taxes. No, 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 no. I no, mean, I no, can't I'm not taxing. I mean, for example, I for example, real quick, I when I was getting my house redone, the contractor, I had a balance due to the contractor, and he said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 10% off if you pay me in cash. So I saved 10%. Well, that's a, that's, a, that's a discount. Sorry, that's different. I understand that, but that's the only, the only reason that's he did that, different. the only reason he did that is because... I don't care why he did it. I don't care why he did it. He's got a right to give you anything. Uh, I understand that. I, listen, 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 my point is, yeah. the only reason why he did that was because then he didn't have to claim the rest of the money on his taxes. You, no, no, you don't know that. I don't know, I know, I don't know that, but that's it. What other he possible not, reason? He, the, he may not deal with a credit card and want to pay them 2% of the bulk cost. No, no, it wasn't. I was going to give him a check. I, would give him a, I, was, I was going to give him a check, you know. So, I mean, the only reason why he would do that would be to avoid detection. Uh, Probably. There. And, and, and that's my Probably. point, is when you deal with labor, helping labor, the main, uh, of course, the interest, uh, with low interest, no interest rates would be great for yeah, the but, booming economy, but labor for labor means no taxes. That's about it. Okay. Well, I'm just saying that, yes, you can cheat using cash, and yes, you can cheat using less, is what you've proven. Yeah, but there seems to be... You can cheat with less currency like you can cheat with yeah. cash currency. And it doesn't and seem to be... And it's not my responsibility. I, I only want that. to save the interest. I understand <laughs> that, but right. other than the creation of, of a no-interest loan, to me, there's 
I don't see uh, uh, a real advantage if you still have to pay the tax on it. It's, it's like the same thing. But oh, we got to get it. That's right. Break. Hold it's on. only one advantage. Okay. It's, you can't duck the tax. That's no problem. Like Tom Kennedy said, he paid his yeah. one so he could take the two other others to pay down and his still, debt. I, I'm still missing that. But hold on. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. And now, live from Chicago, here's the Black Knight of Talk Radio, James Arthur Johnson. We are back live. Continuing our talk uh, in with John Turmel, and we went from the idea of usury into the uh, uh, sweat equity, if you will, and we are back uh, live. Welcome back. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I got one, one other room, uh, question from the chat room that uh, hopefully I didn't lose. Um, uh, well, let me go. Uh, what is it? Oh, what's in it? Uh, the question is, when you're talking about the powers of be going along with this, what's in it for them? I think I, I mean, you did answer it in a way, but perhaps you can address it specifically. Why would they go along with this? Because it would be banking of debts on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, who in heaven art, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth in heaven. Uh, on earth as in heaven the same. Give us today tomorrow's bread. And forgive us all our debts, as we forgive our debtors all for debts with no regrets. So, Jesus said, when you pray to the Father, what you're doing is you're not praying for deliverances from sins and trespasses. That was a corruption. It's for deliverance from debts, okay, and exponential debts. Jesus was a bank fighter. Now, uh, you want to, oh yeah, you want to hear, you know the parable of the talents? Okay, that's the well. parable of the, that's, it's an, when, it explains why Jesus beat up the bankers in the temple, and that's a pretty incredible story, okay? So, uh, they, they asked him, why do you speak in parables? Let me find the part here. There's a parable of the talents, but, you got, can I do this one? Yeah, I've, well, I've actually, quite Quite important. Okay. Actually, writing my own stuff on this, uh, Jesus. Okay. Well, let's let me just read the, my story on uh, on Jesus. No, I'll try and pop ahead to the parable of the talents when it fits. Now, first of all, I got a story about Nehemiah. It explains how interest arises. Nehemiah 5:10 is the greatest story in all of the Bible. One tale to show how change arrest occurs quite easily, especially when humans find themselves in scarcity. A father leaving his estate, his son he has but four. To each of them he gives a sack of seed to grow some more. The first son has misfortune due to natural events. The loss of crop to a tornado in predicament. The second son he suffered to with locusts in a field. His children soon would starve after insufficient yield. The third son had a tiny crop, but it was touch and go. He had eight kids who ate most everything that he could grow. The fourth son's crop was bountiful. His granaries were full. His brothers asked if some spare seeds might be available. In his right ear he heard advice that he knew to be true. Do help them out, and should you fail, they'll be there helping you. But in his wrong ear he heard words so greedy in their tone. Don't risk security, for your success was all your own. But if you rent your seeds to them and gain from what they reap, you soon won't have to work with interest to earn your keep. At some point in man's history, a brother chose that way, enslaved with debt, all of the others, lasting to this day. So, who the Lord must be? Ezekiel 34, 27 says, The poor will know when they've been liberated from those who've enslaved them so. The one who breaks the evil bars of yoke of slavery, he'll be their savior, that's for sure, no other can he be. Like Nehemiah, Jesus knew a Lord must set them free and fight the men who had imposed the yoke of slavery. In Luke 4, verse 18, he says, Anointed by the Lord, I preach the good news to the poor, a world they can afford. The prisoners shall be set free, oppressed shall be released. When comes the year of our Lord's favor, you will surely feast. Christ's law of abundance, here it is. In Paul to the Corinthians 2, chapter 8, 14, oh, hang on a second. Okay, yeah, right, Jesus, first time. Chapter 8, 14, we find abundance matched to need with charity foreseen. Now, this is Paul's Corinthians 2. Your own abundance now should be supplying for their need, 
scepter of abundant slavery will supply you your own seed. And in this way, who gathers much will not have overfill, and he who gathers little will be taken care of still. And in this way, there soon will be a rich equality where people help each other with great productivity. In Paul to the Corinthians, book 2 does so reveal. In chapter 8, 11, you must act to match your zeal. So based on what you have, you should complete what you began and not on what you do not have, money, to do the most you can. So judge according to your men, material, and tools, and not according to the lack of money ruling fools. In Matthew 5, verse 42, on credit, he did say, From one who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. In Luke 6, 35, he notes the law that we must learn of your abundance, lend without expecting its return. In Luke 14, 14, he said, The rich should help the poor, and though you may not be repaid, the Lord will still ensure that when the resurrection of the righteous does take place, you'll be rewarded at that time. You'll get an honored place. So in Acts 20, 35, he tells us to believe. More blessed is it to donate than it is to receive. In Matthew chapter 7, 12, it's hard to misconstrue. Do unto others what you'd like to have them do to you. If what it means you found interest to be unjust, refusing to inflict it while in plenty is a must. In Matthew 19, 24, he says the lure is too great. A man with plenty can't resist and thereby seals his fate. It's harder for a rich man to get into heaven high than it is for a camel to pass through a needle's eye. Assault on moneylenders. Abundance had two ancient laws from which he had to choose. Abundance increased for the rich or loans for those who have who lose. To those who have abundance will be given. Now, I've already introduced this statement. This is from his parable of the talents and from his parable of the meaners, and it's in Mark. And this is the most often quoted verse of Jesus Christ in all of Scripture seven times. Okay? To those who have abundance, more seeds, will be given even more. And from those without abundance will be taken from their store. Or your own abundance now should be supplying for their need, and that their abundance later will supply you your own seed. In Matthew 4, verse 23, it says in Galilee, He preached the good news of the kingdom for those who would see. He taught the difference in laws for three years under Rome, and then in physical attack, he drove his message home. In Matthew 10, in Matthew 10, 3, 4, he says, My friend, do not suppose that I have come to bring earth peace. That's not the path I chose. I did not come to bring you peace. I came to bring a sword, a revolution for the poor that's worthy of a Lord. Luke 12, verse 49 repeats, I've come to bring a fire to see the earth already lit is to what I aspire. So do you think that I have come to bring you peace on earth? Division is the reason I have come to set my worth. In Matthew 21, verse 12, the story of his fight. With whip he battled money lenders. He was not contrite. He sent upon the bankers and he caused them all a loss. For busting up their temple books, they nailed them to their cross. And so you see, Christ did much more than preach the godly way. He stood against the interest and knew his life he'd pay. But we don't have to die like him. He showed another way to fight against the usury, a plan for use today. It's in the parable of Minas, Luke 19, 16, and in the parable of talents, Matthew 25, 14, parable of talents. The parable of talents in Matt 25, 14 depicts the reign where the effects of interest are seen. Quote, the kingdom that is heaven is like where a master takes a lengthy leave of absence and for foreign lands he makes. He calls together servants so his wishes they might learn. You put my money to good use until I can return. According to abilities, five talents to the first, two golden talents to the next, one talent to the worst. The first did well in industry, it doubled with five more. The next did well in his own way and doubled his before. The weakest of the servants knew his master to be hard. Afraid to lose the gold, he buried it out in the yard. Years later, when the master came, he called them to account. To settle up their debts, they had to meet his due amount. Oh, by the way, this is uh, taken from the New International Version, and it's incredible how rhythmic 
the verses are so that I hardly have to change any words to make them rhyme, you know. This is really close to the real stuff. Uh, I mean, the first one said, I double mine, here's ten with interest. The master said, you've done quite well, to that I will attest. The second said, you gave me two, and with two more, that's four. The master said, I thank you for increasing so my store. The third said, master, we both know you reap where you don't sow. I buried it, and here's what's yours. I found it didn't grow. The master said, a lazy servant, I do you regard. You know I reap where I don't sow. I am a man who's hard. You should have put my money with the bank so that I get my interest when I return. A failure you'll regret. To those who have abundance will be given even more. From those without abundance will be taken from their store. So give his talent to the others who now have a heap and throw him into alley where men gnash their teeth and weep. Terrible of the minas. The parable of Mina is in St. Luke 1911, had servant once again rejecting interest in heaven. All right. All right. Can I stop it? This is all yep. nice and dandy, but what you're relying on, and in Jesus said he was coming back to burn the weeds that were amongst the tares, uh, the, tear, the weeds amongst the wheat, and judged by the fruits. And so what I interpret that to mean is that the judgment will, this earth is going to fail, and that uh, Jesus or angels will come in judgment to take those who have loved and cared for one another and had this optimism and burn the other ones who don't. Do you think that wonderful mama is really going to be in a happy in heaven where Junior's down in hell? It's going to be because, I mean, well, I, I didn't say hell. You see, that I, I, well, I'm just saying that, believe it or not, I think I, heaven's going to have everybody except that people are going to feel shamed. Eventually, but people are going to die when they leave this planet and to be then mm -hmm. deal with uh, the skin that they had on, which uh, was was pretty uh, pretty negative. There's nowhere to say we're all going to live halfway up after here. It's well, what's going to happen. No, no, it's, money it's, it's, no, no, no. We can, but what is the problem on this planet is is the ego, which puts someone else above someone else. And when that is dealt with, we can have peace on here. But how well, I think that it's easier to fix money than deal with fixing egos. Because you can't, if you fix money, the next group of people with the egos will kind of figure how they can corrupt that. Remember, this country was founded on some pretty good principles, and it was... All right, back, back to my musical chairs example about paradigm shifts then. Yes, guys who are in a musical chairs death gamble over money are going to be as evil and corrupt and seething as you say they are. Okay? I accept your premise. But add an extra chair so that there's one, enough, a matching number of chairs to play it. Like when it was missing a chair and, and food at the end so of the game that? for the where's orphans. Where's that in your quote? Show me where that's quoted. Where, gonna, where that, that chair is going to come in. Where did Jesus say that? No, 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 no. Jesus no, never no, did. Jesus no, talked no, no, no. about here's how you live and I'm here is your paradigm. I know, but see, you're going to get great. You could come up with this poetry for Jesus. But if you actually look at what the man says, well, the man is not saying that this is going to work out. The man is not saying that things are going to be wonderful here. They say that judgment will come upon the earth and take the uh, the good uh, away from the bad so they can want it. This is what it's saying. It's not saying yeah, that again, this is going to work out I don't out think here. that he's going to take away the, the bad kids from the nice mama. See, but you're, you're, putting it, you're putting it in a, in a actually, you're, the way you're putting it, is you're putting flavor in there that's not there. Jesus said he's going to take a sword between a mother and a daughter and a father and a son. He does not yeah, come he, to heal. He comes to bring with a sword. So you can quote what you want from it and make your own paradigm, and that's great. But if you're going to quote Jesus, you're going to have to quote all of Jesus. Well, the kids are going to have to rebel against the parents who are loan shark into their generation. Exactly. That's true. And, and it, Jesus it, said he's bringing a sword to split up the loan shark parents from the victim kids. And, and, but, and, and the, the point is the kids... Well, once he's done it, once he's stopped the hell, and we can get on with heaven, yeah, why... Yeah, it, it takes the intervention, whether people say Jesus is coming, or whether they say aliens are coming, or whether they say angels are coming. Yeah. It's let, going let to be intervention. Let me explain my paradigm shift. Let me explain my paradigm shift. When you play musical chairs all your life, you just can't believe 
you can't trust anybody, okay? But if you add another chair, there's no more reason to elbow somebody out of the chair. Oh, it's, it's not a game for who wins the biggest chair, but you're not going to elbow your little sister because you won't get one. If you have to sit in a slightly smaller chair when the music ends because she got on the big one first, I bet you won't elbow her no more. But take out a chair, have a death gamble, law of the jungle, chill or be killed, what do you expect but vent people? But make it a game where everybody can survive? And how's that going to happen? In their brain. I know, how, where's the chair coming from? We're printing the service charge so that the amount of money matches the debt and no one gets you're talking about the people who have created this mess, who have funneled up to billions and billions of dollars, just sitting around going... And like, we're starting okay. an alternate currency that doesn't do that no more if they won't let us fix this. Are yet. you aware of what Gaddafi did for his people? Yes, I will. And what happened, happened to about him? I'll read it later. And what happened to him? I'll read it later. What happened to him is that the, the big, bad... Uh, banking governments came in and blew the hell out of his country. I know. That's what happens. It's criminal. I know. It's, criminal. It, it's like it's a work to try for and the they're just going to stop. They're just going to stop without anybody forcing their hand. Well, I mean, yes, yes, it is just suddenly going to stop. I honestly think that it's going to switch and be stopped that fast. I would love. That. Honestly, I would love that. I wrote a poem about the Gaddafi. Can I read it? It's twelve lines. Obama, Harper, that's Jay and Prime Minister, Cameron, Sarkozy, if they can, will kill Gaddafi's bad example. Kill the honest man. Unlike dictators, West supports, who steal from all the stealth. No thief is Muammar, his love for sharing only wealth. He built a lot of hospitals with health care given free, with schools for education, home and foreign, pay no fee. No man-made river grady built, no tax to where he heads. No interest on loans and 50 grand to newlyweds. With UN human rights the best, what are complaints about? Big malcontents by CIA are only ones who shout by showing up our leaders as the failures that they are to blow his earthly heaven up is reason why they war. And 30,000 bombs delivered by Canadians, Americans, British, and French destroyed that beautiful little country he built and i'm ashamed to be a canadian it's the first time in our history we've been invaders right, right. dropping bombs I on know. people see, see this is this there is a perfect real world not theoretical actual what happened is they came around with owning the media said he was a bad guy stopped all the good stuff about him and he did it and here we are we're in the middle of this and it is all it's incredible isn't it and to think it can all stop as suddenly as a switch of a disc that's would be if the Rothschilds are not whatever you said, paranoid or whatever or, or psychopaths. Uh, psychopaths confirmed multi generational confirmed put it this way. Put yourself like, in their position. Would you like to stand up and say, Okay everybody, I'm we're a, gonna give I'm our, not a our banking network I can't our I can't banking network I can't I'm not a psychopath. Psychopaths operate for a whole different thing. They could easily okay go underground and, and live the next thousand years, not that they would want that option, but because we... Right, so we can't win. So we can't win. Why try? You can, no, you can try. That's the important no, no, part, no. is try. Yeah, why the trust? If you can't win, it's because that's, to try it's that's, better that's, to bow and be a said, good slave. I read what Jesus said, and it's not about winning. It's about doing the right thing just because... Well, then build Jesus' system. I, I, well, I build yeah. Jesus' system. See, out you're, of Paul coming out, you're coming out with the premise that it has to end up all happy after. I don't say that has to be the case. I it, say it, using Jesus' banking system is uh, is is, is right. going to run debts on right. it. We're, we're behind. We're out of time here. The web page is John Turnmel. It's T U R M E L dot com. Uh, and uh, links are on the web page. And the archives will be up there. I'll send you a link to that. And then we'll buy PS.